like, excuse me, hello. Um, I, uh, I don't mean to be so noisy. Um, goodness, um, it's been so long since I've spoken before a group of people. I'm, a, <laughs> I'm surprisingly a little nervous. Not a, uh, not a feeling I normally get, I assure you. Although, recently things have changed, I suppose. I am, I am your substitute teacher. My name is Mr. Eros. <laughs> yes. Yes. Uh, uh, we might as well get all those jokes out of the way. Ha ha ha. <laughs> He's Greek. <laughs> If that makes you feel better. Oh, I don't know about all that. And what was your name again? Ah, it's a lovely name. I'm so glad that you told it to me. Oh, I've... I've uh, got a fair amount of knowledge of history. But I mostly focus on Greek mythology. <laughs> of course I do. <laughs> well, it's a, it's a lovely story, you see, because a lot of people get it wrong. Um, and that's why I'm here today. It's why I was asked to come in uh, for your teacher. You see, I, I wanted to tell you about a important story about uh, Greek mythology, and um, I was really hoping that uh, you'd want to hear it. Oh, don't, <laughs> you, you don't have to do that. You don't have to say anything, miss. What was your name? Oh, that's such a lovely name. <sighs> so tell me, what do we know about Cupid? Yes, yes, he is the he's the son of Ares and Aphrodite. Out of wedlock, unfortunately. Um, you see, Aphrodite is married to Hephaestus, and unfortunately, Aphrodite is well. She's the goddess of love. A little bit fuzzy for a concept of marriage. At least for her. Well, that's just it. It's an interesting thing, you know, to say that Eros is the god of sex um, and a symbol of fertility, yes, and freedom, and also platonic friendship and many other things. Um, little things, really. But I would say that Eros isn't so much the god of sex itself. Because who's really a god of fundamentally a simple concept? <laughs> you don't have to giggle and hide it. I can tell you're holding your hands over your faces because I can hear it as such. <laughs> but um I think it's more about a matter of understanding consent. Cupid and that's that's the story we're we're getting into. Cupid is by all accounts a someone who understands the language of love and the body and the mind. He's very attuned to hearing all the little things that tell him yes or no. And above all else, he respects that consent because it's sacred to hold someone so close, to be in your most intimate of embraces, to know boundless pleasure is not something that you should hastily share. 
and uh, and that's what we're going to talk about. So, who knows of Helios? Sometimes also called Apollo. Helios was the son of Zeus, a god of light. Unimpressive, really. I mean, a walking flashlight. <laughs> Not very helpful sometimes. Helios, much like his father, did not care much for consent. He was a, a god of achievement. He would take things, make them his own. Entitled, you know, spoils of conquests, the perks of being a god and the son of a most powerful god. Helios and Cupid never got along much. And that changed when Helios met Dahlia. You see, Dahlia was an exquisite beauty. One that even, even Cupid would have to admit. We're not Cupid already smitten with Psyche. He would certainly have wooed and at the very least let Dahlia know just how beautiful she was. Helios was smitten with Dahlia almost immediately, but Dahlia was not interested. You see, Dahlia, Dahlia didn't like anyone. Not like that. I mean, not in a, not in a cruel way. It was just, she wasn't ready to give that kind of consent. And Cupid, Cupid could sense that a mile away. As I said, Cupid was the god of sex, but I think a better interpretation is he's god of understanding consent. Helios, on the other hand, was not having it. And when he was rejected and rejected... <laughs> And rejected. <laughs> oh, I hate to laugh. That's that's a little cruel of me. It's not so much that he was being rejected, just the stubbornness. I find I find stubborn people people who refuse to give up. It's an endearing trait when it's properly applied. But as you hear in the story, not the case this time. And Helios eventually became enraged, and he demanded to be redeemed, to be given what he felt was, was entitled to him. So he went to his... his cousin, Cupid, and he said, Cupid, I, I need you to make Dahlia love me. And uh, Cupid, Cupid said no. Cupid said, that's not how this works. And 
upon hearing that rejection from his own cousin, Helios decided that that was that was not how that was. That's not how that was. That can't be how it was. That it will never be that way. For he's Helios, son of Zeus, bringer of the light. Who would dare deny the sun, the light? How is he so entangled and betwixt, bewitched by this young beauty, Dahlia? Why, it must be the work of the gods. It must be my cousin Cupid. He's played a foul trick on me. He's he's hit me with his arrow. He's made me fall in love with Dahlia. That's the only reason I could be so upset by her rejection of my advances. And she would only reject them if he used a hatred arrow. He must have a hatred arrow, and he must have hit her with one and hit me with the other. It's the only way he has to fix this. He has to. He comes back to Cupid and he says, Cupid, you must undo what you've done. Take the hatred arrow out of Dahlia. Fix what you've done so that she may love me. That's not how they work, Cupid said. I never shot Dahlia with a hatred arrow, Cupid tells Helos. I don't have an arrow of hatred. I don't have a tool that denies consent. It's not what I do. And I never struck you with an arrow. My arrows don't work on our kind, Cupid tried to tell him. That he was obsessed. He was fixated on Dahlia. He was he was overwhelmed by her denial of his advances. So Helios decided that Cupid was a liar. And he went to try to tell his dreamt up story to Dahlia. He tried to make her understand. He tried to make her understand that they were supposed to be together. And Dahlia, fearing a god, begged for an escape. And the gods changed her into a tree. A tree that could bask in Helios's light and grow, but be forever unmoving, unchanging. Helios never forgave Cupid. Resents him, even to this day, millennia later. Oh, I'm sorry, I got a little caught up in the story. I I told it as though they were still alive. <laughs> very, very keen observation. Extra points to you. Huh. Oh, um, well, Cupid, in an attempt to... Uh, maybe settle things down with Helios. He he tried to befriend his sister Artemis. That that didn't go as well as he'd hoped. Oh no, no, no. Uh, <laughs> Artemis and uh, Cupid are Good friends throughout all of Greek history. 
The same with Hestia, the older sister of Zeus, the eternal virgin, god of the hearth and home, pledged forever to be a virgin. Uh, many a times uh, a god or even a goddess have come to Cupid asking for a means by which to conquer Hestia and Cupid has no answer for them because as I said Cupid is a god of consent not necessarily sex oh Ah, I suppose we are out of time. Well, it's been very lovely to speak with all of you. Um, I hope that we can all take the time to learn a lesson. Uh, and um, maybe we can all speak again. I would like that very much. Would you? Good. Again, I'm Mr. Eros, and uh, it's been it's been very lovely. Uh, and um, you have a good day now. <laughs>